Here we are! May 2016, we visited the Manhattan Project National Historic Park. At the time, this was the newest national park as it was added to the system in November of 2015. We arrived at the park very early in the morning to sign up for the bus tour, the only way to actually see the Oak Ridge site. These tours can be booked online and fill up very quickly, however they always hold 10 seats for walk-ups. Prior to boarding our bus, we had some time, so we visited the history section of the American Museum of Science and Energy. We had a tour guide walk us through the history of Oak Ridge, from 1939 when Albert Einstein signed a letter to Franklin Roosevelt asking the U.S. government to develop a fission bomb before Germany did, through 1945, the end of the war when the bombs were drop, and even through the 60s as Oak Ridge continued to develop and research nuclear energy. We even got to speak with a few veterans of Oak Ridge from the war days, which was a really neat experience. We finally boarded the bus, which was going to take us around Oak Ridge and show us where all that history happened that we had just learned about. Our first stop on the tour was the Oak Ridge Y-12 building. The Y-12 building has a visitor center and museum all of its own that we got to browse through. The Y-12 building played a critical role in the war effort as it housed 1,152 calutrons. The calutrons were basically large mass spectrometers, which they used to separate uranium-235 out of the abundant normal state uranium-238. The uranium-235 from Y-12 was used in the little boy bomb dropped on Japan at the end of the war. Y-12 still operates today as a research and development facility with a unique emphasis on the processing and storage of uranium and development of technologies associated with those activities. Our next stop on the bus took us to the X-10 Graphite Reactor. This was the world's first continuously operated nuclear reactor. The reactor was built during the World War II Manhattan Project and successfully produced plutonium-239 and enabled a demonstration of the chemical separation process used to produce plutonium for the second atomic bomb. After the war, the reactor was the nation's principal source of radioisotopes for academic, scientific, medical, and industrial use. At one point, they hooked up a toy steam engine to the reactor and produced the first electricity from nuclear energy. The reactor was fueled by natural uranium of 99.3% uranium-238 and 0.7% uranium-235. The reactor had a maximum power of 4,000 kilowatts and was cooled by air moved by large fans. The reactor went critical at 5 a.m. on November 4th, 1943 and operated continuously for 20 years exactly. One of the stops the bus made was at a church that existed here prior to the government takeover of the area. Most of the congregation thought that the church would be torn down, however it was used as a meeting hall and offices throughout the war, and still exists today on the property. The bus also took us past some of Oak Ridge's modern facilities. Oak Ridge still operates today as a leader in many scientific research fields. One such building we got to see was the Spallation Neutron Source, or the SNS. This facility uses high-energy proton beams to bombard liquid mercury and spall off neutrons. These neutrons are then accelerated at high speeds into a sample and scattered in different directions. Special detectors measure the scattering patterns and send the data to the computer. These data can give scientists valuable information about materials such as structure, vibrations, and magnetism. Finally, the bus took us past some of the old buildings that supported the uranium and plutonium enrichment process. Many of these were in a poor state, being torn down or removed. Nuclear contamination signs were everywhere, and it was clear the area was still highly radioactive. We asked the question of, how is this waste being handled? And the answer was, we're burying it. Maybe that's a challenge Oak Ridge should be working on for the future. How do we deal with a waste that's dangerous and lasts 20,000 years? As far as we know, there is no good answer. Finally, the bus took us back to the American Museum of Science and Energy. We didn't have much time, but we explored a few of the exhibits. One of the neat exhibits demonstrated how Oak Ridge's supercomputer Titan functions. Titan is one of the world's most powerful computers and uses thousands of parallel processors to complete a task. This demonstration uses a whole bunch of little tiny computers, color-coded to each section on the screen, showing you which piece each computer is processing. The data is passed back and forth between each processor, instead of one doing the whole computation. We also got to play with a Van de Graaff generator and many of the other fun exhibits on display. Overall, we had a great time and learned a ton, and would definitely recommend visiting the Manhattan Project or American Museum of Science and Energy if you're in the area. Caitlin's the girl robot over there, and I'm the boy robot over here. Because you're a girl. Ah! That's great.